Video games get cancelled all the time, but often it's before we even know that they exist. Much worse is when a game that we've seen and are looking forward to gets spiked. Here are six of the most promising looking games that will now never see the light of day. Killing took place while the family was gathered at home on a Sunday afternoon. Silent Hills was set to be the next game in the venerable Silent Hill survival horror series. It would have been overseen by Metal Gear Solid creator Hideo Kojima and famed horror director Guillermo del Toro. That alone is reason enough to lament the fact that it was cancelled, but Silent Hills is one of the rare cancelled games that the general public actually got the chance to play, albeit in the form of a game called PT, short for Player Tormentor. Sorry, playable teaser. Easy mistake to make. PT was, as anyone who's seen it, played it, or watched a YouTube video of it between their fingers can confirm, absolutely bloody terrifying. <laughs> now, we'll never know whether Del Toro and Kojima would have been able to sustain PT's sense of menace, terror, and profound unease across a full-length game, but the concept trailer released at Tokyo Game Show 2014, and the involvement of horror manga legend Junji Ito, showed us a bit more of what they had in store for Silent Hills. In retrospect, maybe it's better I never got to play this for the sake of my being able to sleep at night. This is Vegas from Surreal Software was going to be a third-person open-world GTA-style story set in Las Vegas where you had to make a name for yourself on the strip through the game's four main activities which were driving, gambling, partying and fighting. Alternative names included Expensive Stag Weekend Simulator 2010. Despite having had nearly $50 million spent on its development, This Is Vegas was cancelled when publisher Midway went bankrupt, so we'll never know whether the final game would have actually been any cop. It could have gone either way. Early previews slammed the game's frat boy stylings and leery minigames, but towards the end of its development, writer Jay Pinkerton was in charge of the script. That's the guy who wrote Portal 2 along with Eric Walpole, which makes you wonder if This Is Vegas had some serious potential after all. Walpole has said that the script he saw was hilarious to the point where Nolan North, who had voiced a character in This Is Vegas, spent 10 minutes quoting his lines from memory when he went into Valve to record his dialogue for Portal 2. So it looks like right at the end, This Is Vegas was trying to turn itself into something that could have been genuinely good. Too bad we won't get to see if they would have pulled it off. Memory's an unreliable narrator who turns our past into fiction. Is reality equally malleable? Welcome to the Equinox. After Bioshock developer Irrational Games wound down in early 2014, several members of the team went on to form a studio called Day for Night Games. They announced their first project for Kickstarter, which was a game called The Black Glove. The game was set in the Equinox, a surreal 1920s theatre with shades of rapture and Columbia, inhabited by three artists in residence, an artist, a filmmaker and a musician, all of whom needed your help with their work. Too arts and craftsy. It reminds me of something one makes at summer camp. Your job as the player was to complete feats to gain control of the black glove of the title. This was a mysterious artifact that allowed you to change the pasts of the artists, altering their medium, message or muse in order to change their work in the present. I wanted to show people a sight they'd never seen. Their own skull, their own skeleton, ambulating, full of life. The Black Glove didn't make its Kickstarter target and is now an indefinite hiatus, with the team members all now working on new games. So what we're left with is the pitch video, hinting at a stylish, surreal, story-driven experience from developers with a proven pedigree. It also would have served as a dire warning of the consequences of time travel. Look how badly you can ruin this band's music, guys. A change to the band's music.
element was going to be the first game from Robotoki, the studio set up by former Call of Duty creative strategist Robert Bowling. The game was set in a zombie apocalypse, but focusing on the human element of the title, working from the premise that in a zombie apocalypse it's man who is the real monster, which is a fact that anyone who's played DayZ can confirm. You would choose for one of three player classes, action, intelligence or stealth, and choose to either survive alone, survive with a partner, or survive with a small child. There were planned cross-platform elements that would have let players on tablets explore the real physical world to obtain items that could then be used in the game. Robotoki was however unable to secure a publishing deal for the game, and the studio closed up shop in early 2015. Now we'll never find out if man was the real monster or not. Judging by the zombie at the end of this trailer, I'm guessing not. Let me tell you a story of heroes. Of four that came, four that fell. And of the heroes that took their place. You might have actually had a chance to play this one, because Fable Legends was all but finished when it was recently cancelled. Set in Lionhead's Fable universe, Legends was an asymmetrical 4v1 multiplayer game. Four players would control Fable heroes in a third-person brawler, while one player, controlling the villain, had more of a real-time strategy experience, sending out enemies, setting traps, and manipulating the environment to try and isolate luckless heroes. <laughs> When we played it on several occasions, Fable Legends was an accessible take on the online battle arena genre, with enough variety between the heroic and villainous roles to keep things interesting. Plus, it was going to be free to play, so stood a good chance of reaching a bigger audience than more recent Fable games. But it wasn't to be, and Microsoft cancelled Fable Legends and shut down Lionhead in early March 2016. Speaking of which... Another victim of Microsoft in early 2016, Knoxville was the upcoming game from Press Play, the developers of Max the Curse of Brotherhood and the excellent puzzle platform game Kalimba. The aim of the game was to survive and escape from an arena full of hostile enemies, drawing inspiration from The Running Man and The Hunger Games. You and seven other players would have started in the same arena with the same goal, cooperation being crucial to collect the coins you needed to escape the level. Coins are valuable though, and players would also be able to betray each other to increase their reward, or, you know, for fun. Man, Robotoki were right about that real monster stuff. Sadly, Knoxville went the same way as Fable Legends when Microsoft shuttered press play at the same time as Lionhead. Those were the promising looking games that will never see the light of day. Which did you like the look of? Did we miss your favourite vaporware? Let us know in the comments and like and subscribe for more from Outside Xbox. Thanks for watching!